This one is Atkins, right? Is that what we have up next, Drew? I think so. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah. Um, do you want to dig into this one? Or I yeah, I mean, it, it felt like there was a lot already in place. Obviously, this is a very, you know, kind of prominent brand, yeah. um, brand that's been around for quite a long time, all three, um, high SKU count, you know, kind of things like that. So, you know, I, it, it does seem like um, from a, a CTA, you know, kind of standpoint um, that there's ways to be able to drive a little bit more uh, consistency. It just feels like it's a little all over the place uh, in terms of where you're trying to get people to go just in terms of, you know, kind of the layout, the the copy that's being used, um, what is clickable and what's not. It, I think it'd be a, a really interesting exercise to do, you know, same thing, the heat map analysis, um, you know, kind of the scroll analysis just to see where people are maybe getting like rage clicks, meaning they're trying to click on something and they're not able to. Uh, what is, you know, kind of falling off from like a scroll analysis as you, you know, scroll, you know, farther down. I think you know that's the inherent challenge that this brand does have is there's so many different ways for you to engage with them you know for meal plans the products uh you know kind of things of that nature um but i, I just think like trying to use a little bit more like universal you know at first glance i'd even know those coupons were available you know it's just stuff like that where um you have that you know what everybody says you have that six seven seconds to kind of like capture their attention get them to click on the next thing it doesn't feel like it's as intuitive you know out of the gates so that people might just get a little overwhelmed and then leave uh and so you know some benchmarks are you under that 50 percent bounce rate ideally um you know if you're above that uh you know on the home page you know you want to be doing some of these tactics and things that we you know go through and recommend as well um anything else that you would add Aaron, on the on the home page yeah, no, I think um, I think you hit it on the head. I, you know, there's a lot to kind of share here. Um, so I think being kind of really clear and concise on if there are multiple paths to take in terms of joining the Atkins program um, or buying products, just to kind of be very kind of clear up front with those two avenues that you can that a user can go down. Um, but I think everything kind of that you had outlined just in terms of CTA strategy is right on right on the money. Um, I'm going to go into actually a page, uh, a products collection page, just so we can kind of see a little bit more here. Um, OK, let's see. So one thing even in, in kind of what I just did, right, um, that was, I don't know, I should have said it out loud, but that was kind of two clicks into just getting into a browse page for a user to shop. So we would definitely recommend, obviously, there's kind of multiple product categories ranging from bars to meals to treats, um, kind of to make it a little bit easier and, and um, a little bit more curated even having each one of those as its step, separate um, subcategory within products. Um, I would even kind of think about, and, and it could be a very good test and it's just semantics, but kind of saying shop products. So it's a little bit more actionable, direct in terms of shop products. And then instead of shop now as the secondary um, subcategory, it would be shop all. And then in that shop all could kind of take you to this landing page where, again, you can kind of reiterate, you know, the, the categories. But if I'm a returning customer and I just want to go and see, you know, the bars and that's the product that I like, I definitely give the option, you know, to kind of have bars, meals, treats as their own subcategories within the navigation. So that's just one thing. And again, that's to save, save a click there. Anything to add there, Drew? Um, and then in terms of, and I'm going to try and find one here, but definitely important. We had noticed when we were looking at the site, you know, earlier, um, there's my pop up. Uh, when we were exploring the site earlier, we did run into a few products that were sold out. Um, really important to just kind of, um, a couple of things was sold out 
one, use the inventory situation, which is a negative and kind of turn it into a positive by turning it into a lead capture vehicle. So um, if there are items that are um, not in stock, I always recommend kind of adding what we were talking about earlier, the um, product badges, adding a product badge that sort of just says, you know, out of, or out of stock or coming soon, whichever is more on brand for you. And then instead of, you know, add to cart, and notify me when available or again, or coming soon, something that, you know, the user will actually then end up clicking into the PDP. And then we could use it as kind of that lead capture and, and grab um, the user's email to inform them when the item is back in stock. So just a really good tactic there. I'm having trouble finding um, a specific item that is out of stock, but it is something that we noticed on the site when we were exploring it last week. So just that I should mention. Um, and then kind of going into product pages. Um, okay, so product pages here, a, a little bit more around, and interestingly enough, um, kind of again in, in that food beverage space, but really adding that, I, sorry to kind of say it again, but kind of those risk mitigation tactics. So it's, you know, shipping return information, FAQs, guarantee messaging, um, just anything to really boost a user's confidence in what they're about to purchase. So just as I kind of scroll down here, you know, we definitely feel like there can be almost an expansion, you know, on this part, I would say, or this part is a little bit, I would amplify it a little bit more. It's almost gets lost. Um, and also would kind of make this potentially a little bit more legible. So, you know, what are kind of like the key ingredients and, and almost, you know, highlight them um, versus this is, could be a, a kind of a lot to take in for a user you know, kind of looking at the back, the back of a label. Um, and then questions and answers. I would definitely kind of have, while Q&A is awesome, we always recommend having that alongside reviews. We really think it's beneficial. Almost having an established FAQ section where the brand comes up with, you know, the five questions. And, and I would definitely say leverage your customer in um, qualitative information, whether it be surveys or reviews, things of that nature. Um, uh, that commonly ask questions and kind of put together your own FAQ um, for users to leverage. Yeah, because yeah, I, I would... Q and A kind of like causes a little bit of friction. Like I, I come on it as a user and it's like, submit your question. Then it's like question one of one. So are there more? Is there like actually, right. you know, you know, by having the pre-selected five, it makes it a lot simpler, I think. Exactly, exactly. And then also on the PDP, you know, I think I mentioned this with the last brand that we are on um, in the cart, but um, you know, being that these most of these items that the product recommendations that are being served up are single variant, you know, just to make it really easy for the customer to add it right to their cart, we would definitely recommend um, adding a CTA right here that says "Add to Cart." So you know, the PDP, you are literally one step away from your cart. So the idea here is I'm already on the PDP. The next move should always be move me into the cart. And, you know, as an added bonus, hey, what can you upsell me, you know, in addition to that? So instead of at current, you know, if I click on, oh, I, I might also like this nut bar, right? I'm taken actually out of the PDP that I was in to another PDP. And now I have to go back, add the other product to my cart, add this product to my cart, and then go to my cart to purchase versus just kind of being able to, you know, add really quickly from that original PDP. I think too, and it's an important point, you know, when we talk about like reducing that friction and kind of putting that in place, but also, you know, we talk a lot about conversion holistically, but you know, there, there's 40 odd metrics that we are tracking that we want to optimize and, and, and ultimately improve. So, you know, in that, product page that we were at previously, we might want to focus specifically on just add to cart. You know, if we start doing the risk mitigation, we have the FAQs a little bit more prominent, easy to see, um, the ingredients more legible. What impact does that have across some of those optimizations to the add to cart rate uh, compared to where it is as a baseline? And then where would it be improved post implementation? Um, and then, you know, another metric that we would want to track is 
uh, you know, the AOV um, uh, and the cart size, uh, if we added those easy, you know, kind of add to cart instead of having to go to the product page and then, you know, kind of add it and go back and add it again, uh, we would think that we would see, you know, kind of an increase um, in the amount of products ordered and then, you know, kind of the basket size and the AOV, you know, kind of from there too. So. And this also can help add to cart because this would actually kind of, if the user hasn't already added this to their cart from a, you know, analytics perspective, that would kind of be a session that was on the PDP and didn't add to cart, right? It would be taken out of their PDP. So interestingly enough, it could really boost both, um, yeah. which is which is awesome. 